Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Sean Evans, host of First We Feast. Come, or, let me try, should I do some sort of happy holidays or some shit? We get it, we get it, we get it, we get it. Do I want to say more things? Capiche? I've eaten 500, room temperature, scorching hot chicken wings. Mm. Wait, how'd you open that up? Sorry, I vaped pretty hard last night. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's going on? And happy holidays, Hot Ones fans. It's Sean Evans, sitting at a table by himself. And you know what that means. It's time for a fan Q&A. What we've done is we've drawn some of the most pressing questions coming out of season two. Season two, it's over, it's okay. We've watched that ship sail. We're bringing season three into port. Sometime in January, taking a little break to reload, rearrange some things. But with season two coming to an end, we need to answer some of the most pressing Hot Ones fans questions. Hot Ones fans, they need to know, and I need to talk. Time to give the people what they want. Let's start with question one. What are your plans for season three? As far as the plan for season three goes, we're gonna keep this show more or less the same. Keep bringing you crazy people. Gonna keep bringing you oddballs. Gonna keep bringing you people who are under the radar. Gonna keep bringing people to the table. We're gonna keep talking to our favorite rappers. We're gonna get athletes, chefs, uh, TV personalities, actors, actresses. We need to definitely get more women in the studio. That's a big time goal for season three. But otherwise, we're more or less staying the same. Just the same Hot Ones thing, the Hot Ones that you love. Does it piss you off when you see Hot Ones ripoffs on YouTube and TV? This is a great question. I've been told by Brass not to get into it too much, but fuck it. I'm gonna say some things. I, I, I can't bite my tongue. If you want the real, follow me on Twitter. I'm not recommending that you follow me on Twitter. I'm boring as hell on Twitter. I barely ever tweet unless it's to like, you know, hey, we got a new Hot Ones episode or to embarrass a big media company or some big YouTube channel that's just blatantly ripping us off. Also though, it's an important distinction because sometimes I think that like uh, people see me like go off on Twitter and they're like, oh, like what about fans and stuff? I love the fan videos. The fan videos are the best. When I see Hot Ones fans goofing off on YouTube and having fun with the show, it warms my heart. My cold, dead, black heart, it makes it three sizes bigger. Here is my like nice thing. All I'll say is this. I'm very happy that all the shows that rip us off fucking suck. Next. From Kevin Hart to Action Bronson, there seemed to be a lot of controversy about the manners of your dining companions. What do you think of the criticism? This is a great question. I'm happy that it was in the hat. I don't know what's in the hat. I'm happy this one was in the hat. Sometimes, you know, the room is like electric and we have such a great time together and it's a conversation that starts before the show and it's a conversation that continues after the show. And then we package it up and we deliver it to the world and then all of a sudden there's this wave of people who, in fairness, I think just like love the show and sometimes they're like defending me. But I would just say this, Kevin Hart was an amazing shoot and then same with action bronson like action bronson and i were actually like kind of talking about it on the side like what's going on here but it's also too crazy because i don't even know where the fucking compass is like bobby lee's episode comes out and there's seriously a comment that's like here's a class act like blah 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 not like action or not like kevin hart like the dude pooped his pants at the dinner table like where is the line what is the guiding philosophy on what is and what is not good table manners when you're on hot ones. I know that this sounds self-serving, but guests that come on our show are just automatically cooler than guests that go on other shows. And I know what you're saying at home, like, oh, Shamba, do the math yourself. If you're gonna do press, are you gonna go and do like five different shows that are all on our block or like whatever, hit them all? Or are you gonna blow out your afternoon, your night, and the entire next day eating wings on YouTube with me. They're the ones who come in here with no guardrails. They're the ones who say, you can ask me whatever you want. They're the ones who will eat the wings that get hot, crazy hot, so hot in fact that sometimes they spit in garbage cans and snot on screen and throw up. I don't understand why their humbleness comes into question. It just doesn't make any sense. And I'm not out to police YouTube comments. However you receive it, however you think about the show, whatever role you think it's playing, that's cool by me too. 
Are you adding hotter sauces to the lineup? It's been a while since someone bowed out. Who knows? Maybe in season three we do go a little bit hotter. Maybe we keep it the same. We haven't really discussed it. And that's because we're not really trying to kill people with hot sauce. That's not really the point of the show. We really think of ourselves as an interview show. So these questions, we're excited to ask people and we're excited to hear the responses and the answers. And honestly, I don't think this show is as good if they're just dead on hot sauce by the third wing. And if that's disappointing to people, listen to this. Trust that those wings are hot as fuck. As the show's developed, now people know. People will sit down and go, I don't wanna get DJ Khaled. He's the only guy I want to beat because he the best. They get the wall of shame. They're like, I'm not going on the wall of shame. It's just, it's just different now. Now we don't have to explain the show. People know the show and they sit down and they're just like you. Some of them are fans of the show and they talk about the show and they get it. They understand that if they bow out, there are serious consequences to pay. When did Sean know what he wanted to do for a living and who were are his biggest influencers? That's a Brett Baker question. Shout out to Brett Baker, Hot Ones super fan, Hot Ones power rankings. I kind of always knew that I wanted to do this and I was a little kid. Uh, my dad used to watch Letterman and he would tape them. So he'd like binge watch them on a Saturday. When I would sit down with him and he'd be throwing his head back laughing, I'd make him pause and explain the joke to me, which I'm sure was highly annoying for my dad, but it was kind of like at that moment that I was like, oh, like lights, camera, action, kind of just struck a chord with me. As far as my biggest influences go, Howard Stern and David Letterman are one, two, and interchangeable. The other two that are big are Jimmy Kimmel and Adam Carolla. Anyway, that's that for the five people that were interested. How can you look yourself in the mirror when you are serving guests cold wings? I hear this all the time from the commenters. I cannot fathom for the life of me why people care so much. This is not Top Chef. We're not trying to like, oh. Also, if we really cared how the wings tasted, like maybe we wouldn't douse them in Pain 100% or douse them in Blair's Mega Death Sauce. Like the wings and the taste and the presentation are very much secondary to the hot sauce. But we hear you. We will be investing in a warming tray. I think that it's an improvement for the show going forward. Waving the white flag, we surrender. Did I hit it, the notes or? Oh, and because people are late. Which guest struggled the most after the camera's cut? Everybody knows the story about Coolio. Everybody knows about Eddie Wong. I've talked about how Riff Raff had some issues afterwards, as Currency did as well. But the number one after show, uh, and this is new, is Big Bite Martin Garrick. Who takes small bites? Martin, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna regret this. Martin, I'll remember you said that. <laughs> so I think he drank a little bit too much milk. And during the actual episode, he held it together like a pro. Afterwards though, he spent some time in the complex bathroom and to his credit though, walked out like, all right, I still wanna go out tonight. <laughs> I still wanna go out tonight. So those questions are laid to rest. Thank you very much for an incredible year we've had. I think it was nine episodes in season one. I think that we did 41 in season two, just week after week, pumping out those episodes. I think it was horrible for my health and my digestive tract, but damn it if we didn't build something together. And we hope to give you more, and we hope to give you bigger, and we hope to give you better in 2017. I hope to connect with you guys a lot more in 2017. I know I'm I know I'm distant. I know I'm a little awkward. I know that I don't really uh I'm I'm not like a New York media like uh dude really. Where was I going with that? <laughs> <laughs>